The melting point is the temperature at which the solid and liquid phases of a compound are at equilibrium with each other. Once the melting point has been reached, the temperature of the compound will remain constant until the entire solid has been converted to the liquid state. There are two main reasons as to why a melting point analysis should be performed. Firstly, it can aid in the determination of the compound's purity, and secondly, it enables you to determine the compound's physical property to compare with the literature values. To prepare your compound for melting point analysis, you must first powder the compound on, on a watch glass with a stirring rod or a mortar and pestle. Once the sample is relatively fine, use a capillary tube to tap the open end of the tube onto the sample. Once a small amount of sample has entered the tube, tap the closed end against the bench to allow the sample to fall to the bottom. The goal is to fill approximately 1-2 to two millimeters of sample into the tube. Place your prepared sample into one of the three slots of the instruments. You can measure up to three samples at a time. Each instrument works by the same principles, however there are slight differences in the settings. Refer to the lab manual for specific instructions. The melting point range is indicated by the onset of the physical changes such as darkening of the sample or forming a clear liquid. When setting up the instrument for melting point analysis, you should use the temperature ramp at the lowest setting possible because you do not want to heat up the sample too quickly, otherwise you'll get an inaccurate reading. An alternative way of measuring melting point is to test your sample quickly once with a high heating rate to determine approximately what the range is and then do it a second time with starting melting point within 20 degrees of the range that you got from the initial rapid heating. This method is efficient for high melting solids. If a capillary tube ever breaks in the instrument, carefully flip the instrument upside down to remove the broken glass, and then dispose the broken glass in the broken glass container, and not the wastebasket. There are three values associated with every melting point. First, the onset point, which is the point when the compound starts to melt. Secondly, the meniscus point, which is the point when there's equal volumes of solid and liquid. Lastly, the clear point is the moment that all solid converts to the liquid form. The melting point is indicated by the onset and clear point values. We typically report the range from the onset point to the clear point, while some literature will report one of the three points discussed. Generally, a pure crystalline organic solid will have a melting point range of one degree. A depression or broad range serves as an indication that your sample is impure. Approximately 0.5 degrees depression corresponds to a 1% impurity. Now onto the topic of mixed melting points, which is a way to confirm your solid's identity. When two compounds are mixed, the melting point should be the same if they are in fact the same compound. Conversely, if the samples are not identical, the value of the melting point should be depressed. To conclude this video, you have learned what a melting point is, how to prepare a sample for a melting point, how to operate the instrument, and finally how and when to perform a mixed melting point. 